ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا وسيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله اما بعد so yesterday then we were at the section where it said فَإِذَا قِيلَ لَكَ مَنْ رَبُّكَ So if it is said to you, if somebody asks you, who is your Lord? Then you can tell them, رَبِّي اللَّهِ My Lord is Allah. الذي رباني ورب جميع العالمين بنعمه the one who nurtured me and all of the creation with his blessings وهو معبودي ليس لي معبود سواه and he is the one who I worship alone and I do not have any other deity any other god to worship besides him he is the only one that i worship and the evidence that allah is the lord of everything that exists is in surah al-fatiha the surah that you read when you pray right at the beginning it says Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen That all praise is for Allah, the Lord of everything that exists. And everything besides Allah is known as Al Alameen. So Allah is the Lord of everything that exists. And then you say, وَأَنَا وَاحِدٌ مِنْ ذَلِكَ الْعَالَمُ And I am just one creation from all of that creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. All of the millions of people, the billions of people, you are just one person. Out of all of this creation, the heavens and the earth, you are just one small thing. And then, فَإِذَا قِيلَ لَكَ بِمَا عَرَفْتَ رَبَّكَ If they then, if they then say to you, or if somebody asks you, How do you know your Lord? How do you know your Lord? فَقُلْ بِآيَاتِهِ وَبِمَخْلُوقَاتِهِ You can say that you know your Lord through His signs and through His creation. So what are these signs and what is the creation that you see which indicates and shows you about the existence of Allah, the Creator? From that was, we mentioned yesterday, the night and the day, for example, and also the sun and the moon, for example, and the seven heavens and the seven earths. For example, and Allah told us in the Quran, وَمِنْ آيَاتِهِ اللَّيْلُ وَالنَّهَارُ وَالشَّمْسُ وَالْقَمَرُ لَا تَسْجُدُوا لِلشَّمْسِ وَلَا لِلْقَمَرُ وَاسْجُدُوا لِلَّهِ الَّذِي خَلَقَهُنَّ إِنْ كُنْتُمْ إِيَّاهُ تَعْبُدُونَ That from his signs are the night and the day, and the sun and the moon do not prostrate to the sun or the moon but prostrate to Allah the one who created 
who made the sun and the moon. And also Allah told us in the Quran, Inna rabbakumu Allahu alladhi khalaqa samawati wal arda fi sittati ayyam thumma stawa ala al arsh <coughs> that your Lord is the one who created the heavens and the earth in six days and then he rose above the throne as we mentioned yesterday the throne of Allah is the highest thing from all of the creation and then Allah is above that throne and to give an idea of how big the throne of Allah is, there is a hadith where the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam explained to us, he told us about the size of the throne. He said, imagine a ring, a ring that you put on your finger, a small ring, Imagine that ring, you throw it into a huge desert, into a massive desert. How big is that ring compared to all of that desert? It is tiny. That is the example of how big the throne is compared to all of this earth and the heavens and the universe. All of this universe is like the size of that ring. And the huge desert is like the size of the throne of Allah. That is the size of the throne compared to all of this other creation. So all of this other creation is tiny. And the throne is huge, like a ceiling on top of all of this creation. In fact, in fact, the throne of Allah is even bigger than that. Because the throne of Allah is like the huge desert and the ring is actually like the footstool of Allah. Then the footstool of Allah is like a huge desert and all of this creation is like a ring compared to the footstool of Allah. So there are two examples. All of this creation compared to the footstool of Allah is just like a ring, a tiny ring compared to the size of the footstool of Allah. But then the footstool of Allah compared to the throne of Allah, then the footstool is only like a tiny ring compared to the throne that is the huge desert. Basically meaning that all of this creation is tiny compared to the throne of Allah. But then Allah himself is greater and more magnificent than his creation. Greater and more magnificent than the throne. So Allah tells us he is above all of the creation, above the throne. And then Allah mentions in the ayah, يُغْشِ اللَّيْلَ النَّهَارَ يَطْلُبُهُ حَثِيثًا والشمس والقمر والنجوم مسخرات بأمره ألا له الخلق والأمر تبارك الله رب العالمين And that ayah tells you about the night and the day and how they change. Night becomes day, day then becomes night. And talks about the sun and the moon and the stars. All of these things created by Allah سبحانه وتعالى. And then it says والرب the Rabb, the one who is the Lord of everything in creation. He is the one who is deserving to be worshipped. He is the one who created all of the universe, 
So he's the one who deserves to be worshipped. He is the creator. He is the one who gave life and death to everything. So he is al-ma'bud. He is the one to be worshipped. And that is mentioned in the Quran. Allah tells us at the beginning of Surah Al-Baqarah, at the start of the, the Quran, يَا أَيُّهَا النَّاسُ عُبُدُوا رَبَّكُمُ الَّذِي خَلَقَكُمْ وَالَّذِينَ مِنْ قَبَلِكُمْ لَعَلَّكُمْ تَتَّقُونَ that, O oh people, Allah says, O oh people, worship your Lord, the one who created you and created those who came before you. So everything in creation, whether you right now or all of the people who came in history, all of them were created by Allah. So Allah says, Worship your Lord, the one who created you and created those who came before you. Because the creator, he is the one who has the right to be worshipped. The one who created the heavens and the earth, he is the one who has the right to be worshipped. Not some statue or some idol that cannot create anything. Then Allah tells us, الَّذِي جَعَلَ لَكُمْ الْأَرْضَ فِرَاشًا Worship your Lord, the one who made the earth as a resting place. Allah made this earth as a ground that we can live on. Allah made that earth for us in this way. It is a ground that we can live upon. And Allah made the sky as a canopy, like a ceiling, like a roof on top of us. Allah made that as a ceiling, the sky, a canopy above us. And anzala wa anzala mina sama imaa. And another reason why you should worship Allah because He is the one who sent down rain for us. Allah sent down the rain, the rain that makes the trees grow and the fruits and the vegetables that we eat. <coughs> That's another reason to worship Allah. He sends down the rain that we need, the water that we need. فَأَخْرَجَ بِهِ مِنَ الثَّمَرَاتِ رِزْقًا لَكُمْ So when Allah sends down that rain, He tells us, He then makes the fruits grow. The fruit, it grows after the rain comes and the trees, they drink that water. The fruit then grows for us and we can eat that. It is a food for us to be able to live so all of these are reasons to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. فَلَا تَجْعَلُوا لِلَّهِ أَنْدَادًا وَأَنْتُمْ تَعْلَمُونَ So then Allah says, If you know all of these things, you know that Allah created all of the heavens and the earth, and Allah is the one who created you, and created the people who came before you, and he is the one who made this earth as a resting place for us to live on and made the sky like a ceiling, like a canopy above us. And he sends down the rain and the fruits, they grow and we can eat them and live. If you know Allah has done all of those things for you, then Allah says, فَلَا تَجْعَلُوا لِلَّهِ أَنْدَادًا then don't make partners along with Allah. And you know all of that. You know all of these things. Then don't worship others. Don't worship the dead people in their graves. Don't go to their graves and prostrate to them and make dua to them. Don't worship idols and statues. Don't worship the sun and the moon. Worship Allah. He is the only one who has done all of those things for you. 
He is the Rabb. And the Rabb is the one who is deserving of worship alone. Ibn Kathir, rahimahullah ta'ala, mentioned, Al-Khaliq li hadhihi al-ashya huwa al-mustahiqq lil-ibadah. The one who created all of these things, he is the one deserving of worship. Ibn Kathir is another one of the great scholars. You remember we mentioned <coughs> in the first lesson about the scholars of Islam. They are the people who studied Islam in detail and they learned a lot of information, a lot of knowledge about the Qur'an, about the Hadith, about the Sunnah. And so they are known as the scholars of the religion, the scholars of Islam. In Arabic, they are known as Al-Ulama. <coughs> so they are the scholars. And Ibn Kathir, he is one of those famous scholars. And he is famous for a lot of different books. One of the main ones is Tafsir Ibn Kathir. This scholar Ibn Kathir wrote a book on Tafsir. Tafsir books, the Tafsir books, they are the ones that explain the meanings of the Quran. They explain all of the sections of the Quran and what is supposed to be meant by each part of the Qur'an. They are known as the Tafsir books. Tafsir books. And Ibn Kathir, this scholar known as Ibn Kathir, he was one of the famous scholars who wrote a famous book about Tafsir. And it's a big book, like 10 volumes, 15 volumes, a big book that explains all of the meanings of the Qur'an. So that scholar Ibn Kathir, he said, Al-Khaliq li hadhihi al-ashya huwa al-mustahiq lil-ibadah. The one who created all of these things, he is the one who deserves to be worshipped. And that is obvious, it makes sense. If Allah is the one who created you and gave you life and made this earth for you to live on, and made the sky above us, and sends down the rain for us, and makes the trees and the vegetables and the fruits grow, so that we can eat and live and survive. If Allah did all of those things for us, then He is the one who deserves to be worshipped by us. Somebody who has died in their grave, there is no point worshipping them. They did not create the heavens and the earth they did not send down the rain they did not give us life and death the idols and the statues some people worship those idols and statues and the sun and the moon and the trees none of those things created the heavens and the earth none of those things created the the creation that you see around you None of those things made this earth. None of those things made you alive. None of those things give you the fruits and vegetables. None of those things are your Lord. Your Lord is the one who created all of those things. And that is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that's why Ibn Kathir, he says, the one who created all of these things He's the one who deserves to be worshipped. And that's what Allah said to the non-Muslims at the time of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The mushrikun as they are known as, the non-Muslims at that time who were committing shirk. They were worshipping other gods alongside Allah, besides Allah. Allah told them many times in the Quran that Allah is the one who created them and gave them life and death and gives them everything in this earth and created the universe. Allah told them these things many times to show them that they are supposed to be worshipping Him. But still, they carried on worshipping their idols and their statues and their dead people and the sun and the moon and the stars. 
And that's why on the Day of Judgment, they are going to end up in the hellfire. And the Muslims, the believers who worshipped only Allah alone and did not worship anyone else, anything else, did not make dua to the dead people or anybody else, they worshipped Allah alone. They are the Muwahidun, the people of Tawheed. And they will enter paradise on Yawmul Qiyamah, on the day of resurrection. That section is where we're going to stop on for today. The next section from next week, inshallah, is going to talk about lots of different types of worship. In Islam, there are lots of different types of worship. And from the next uh, session from next Monday at the same time, 7 p.m. GMT, the British time. We're going to start going through lots of different types of worship. Because the Muslim, you have to do different types of worship. It's not just the prayer five times a day. There are lots of other things too. So we're going to discuss what are all of those other different types of worship that a Muslim is supposed to be doing, that is where we'll begin from next week, insha'Allah ta'ala, at 7 p.m. GMT. We'll stop on that for today then.